Um, as a reminder to everyone, this meeting is being recorded and will be posted to a public YouTube. So please follow the Kubernetes code of conduct, which basically boils down to don't be a jerk. And I will pass it over to Kendrick for an enhancements update. Hey, um, so nothing's changed. Still, uh, we're, I believe we're at the same amount as yesterday. I just logged in, so um, I believe it's still uh, 26 or 28. I'll get it changed, or 26, so I'll make sure it's changed on the notes. Cool. Thank you, Kendrick. I will pass it over then for CI Signal. Howdy, everyone. Hope you, hope you all are having a fantastic Friday. And today, CI Signal, it's green. Uh, master blocking, 115 blocking, uh, no, uh, no persistent failures. Master blocking. I uh, I, to, uh, I told you all that yesterday there were uh, there was a round that failed, and it seems that between yesterday and today, uh, the some uh, some of the tests that failed were removed from the job. The other ones uh, they uh, they've been cre uh, clearing out. So uh, we'll keep observe uh, we'll keep observing those uh, uh, those couple of tests to see that everything keeps going uh, keeps going well. And now by, uh, back to master informing. So, master, uh, master informing, there is an issue from six scalability. Uh, during a conversation, uh, during a conversation with uh, with them, it was mentioned that the failure, uh, that the errors were related to Brow restarting pods too often. Although we have not gotten an update from them, uh, we'll reach out today uh, see if that's still the case or something that we should worry about. Then. Uh, my, uh, the, fav uh, the favorite issue of everyone for the last couple of weeks, core DNS, one three or one five. So, back uh, a lot of back and forth, a lot of back and forth on this one. Seems to be the two cluster life cycle in general is leaning towards reverting the cube up, uh, puts a method of bootstrapping a cluster to use core DNS one three, which is a, a the stable version. Uh, right now, the PR that is open to do the revert, uh, it needs uh, uh, they're waiting for an owner of QWOP to approve or uh, to approve or deny. And uh, yeah, so just wait, uh, just waiting on an approval from an actual uh, from an actual owner. But C cluster life cycle is leaning towards their revert. Then. Flaking, uh, flaking. Uh, the must is uh, some of the reboot tests uh, from C cluster life cycle. Uh, they failed again. I think earlier today. Uh, we still need to uh, to create an actual issue and and talk with them to see if uh, there's anything that we can do to make that uh, to make the less flaky, but uh, not uh, nothing to worry about right now. Besides that. Uh, Thank you. Uh, thanks to the feedback from Jordan Liggett yesterday, we are working on moving some of the uh, Cubectl uh, test uh, back to uh, back to the secret uh, back to the secret release dashboard. Uh, currently, the uh, we are waiting to merge the PR that's gonna uh, that's gonna bring it back to the secret release dashboard. Uh, uh, due to uh, due to the fact that we are waiting for the actual fix to be merged. Uh, the fix is a cherry. Uh, it's a cherry pick, and it's uh, I listed in the update. It's seventy eight, seventy seven, two, and that is for today's CI signal update. Any questions, comments that you all have? Yeah. So for core DNS, if we need someone from Kube up to make a decision, do we know who, who like is the person or people from Kube up we can ping on that? Because we've had this issue open now for a while. And I would like to see some closure on it sometime soon. And amazing that you brought it up because I I forgot about that detail. I, uh, I we CI Signal have not been able to actually reach out to one uh, to get a response from any of the owners uh, for Cube Up. So if somebody knows uh, someone, uh, please uh, ping them. Uh, we actually got a response from uh, Aaron, who's one of the owners of Cube Up. Um, it seems like the discussion has continued since then. Ah, okay. So in that case, okay, I'll take my message back. And thank you, Aaron. Okay. 
Um, Aaron, just since you're on the call, is Coob up just right now trying to debate between those two PRs, which one to merge? Am I the Aaron Nick was talking about? <laughs> yes, you are the Aaron. Okay. But what, what, where did I weigh in or what was I saying? Are you saying, Hey, I'm here. I should make an opinion. I should have it. It was, uh, the issue I pinged you on yesterday. Um, you are at Spiff XP, right? Yes, 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 I am. Yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, there's a PR seventy eight six nine yeah. one. I, I, I noticed it's it's been going on. Um, so okay, welcome again once again, everybody, to the wonderful world of there's a script called kubup.sh that doesn't actually have an owner, and we all keep calling it deprecated, but it's the script that runs the majority of our CI, and I don't know who actually uses it live in the wild. Um, so, uh, okay, so I would just like, I, oh, eat, with, with the fact that I do have approver rights inside of the cluster directory, I guess that gives me some responsibility. Even without that, I'm always going to err on the side of what makes it easier for our users. This seems like the upgrade path isn't quite clean enough. It seems like we have a very, very well exercised path with the older version of core DNS. Can somebody explain to me why we're so pushy to move forward with the latest version of core DNS? So my understanding is that there were some scalability tests that were failing with core DNS 1.3. Whenever you're running clusters that have 5,000 or more nodes, the, mem uh, the memory resources need to be increased. Otherwise, core DNS is going to keep uh, crashing and that's, gonna, uh, that's just going to put a heavy weight on the cluster. OK, so I feel like we need input from scalability here to make the most effective decision. But it's also unclear to me how we've been using core DNS 131 for a while. I don't think the scalability tests were failing for a while. So it could be that there was a regression introduced that caused core DNS to be a problem. Um, but like, I'm always going to err on the side of let's roll back. Uh, but I feel like what is needed to make the most effective decision here is to include scalability in the loop. Yes. And also, uh, there's the other PR where uh, they were actually trying to do the one uh, one five upgrade, and someone from scalability actually uh, mentioned that out. Let me find it and I'll send it to you. Okay. Um, I'm looking at the what I believe are the yeah. That that's all the context I have right now, uh, being put on the spot. I can follow up a little bit later, but my suggestion would be get scalability on the line. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Xiam is one of the chairs and is typically in the Pacific time zone, so may be reachable right now. Wojtek is in, is in uh, Poland, so again, if you try something right now, you may not get Wojtek, but I would go there. Okay, absolutely. We'll follow up on that. Thank you. Um, but just, just so to be clear what the position is, it's like, I, I see, I, I really think we should revert. I really think we should roll back to the earlier version. Uh, we need to understand what their pushback is. Mm -hmm. Cool. So it sounds like we'll talk to SIG Scalability about this. And that sounds like a good next step to take. Cool. Thank you. So it sounds like we have two issues for six scalability that we need their input on. Yes. Awesome. Um, any other questions for CI Signal? OK, then we can go on to bug triage. Yep. So um, we really only have three major blocking issues, two of which we've discussed. They're the core DNS regression issues. Um, there's another one that the, uh, let me see if I, I just put it in the note. Um, I think it's 78691 or no, 78553, the users saying that they're release blocking but haven't been responding. Um, 
I might need some insight into this. Yes, I pinged in SIG API machinery for that one last night and the response I got is the issue author Chow is pinging someone named Clayton in PM to get the final review on it, but that's all that is outstanding is just a final review. Okay, cool. Um, and thanks for taking that on. Um, so, okay, once we get that reviewed, fine. And then the Cordina's regression ones. Um, a new issue popped up yesterday that I th would like some insight in. Like, Claire, maybe you can make the uh, decision here what to do with it. Um, it's 78794. Mm -hmm. It's an update cluster auto scalar version to 115.0 beta 1. Um, saying that it needs some register and code freeze because of the large amount of code to simulate. Um, that just seemed like a weird PR to just suddenly up, like appear and then get approved and seems to be going yeah. through. They So they're claiming this is in a separate repository. Therefore, they need the final build release candidate at the end of the Kate's release cycle. Okay, so it, if I'm reading this right, this is not touching KK. This is touching something adjacent to KK. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yep, they're pointing okay. to 115.0 beta 1. Okay, I think I'm fine with it if it's not touching KK and it's touching something that these folks actually own themselves, letting mm -hmm. them run it through. Yeah, it seems the only file that it touches is the DCE cluster manifest, um, and it's just a cluster autoscaler manifest file. Yeah, that should be okay. fine then. Cool. Sounds good. All right, uh, those are my main things. So once those three issues are resolved, we have a few, we have about five open issues. The other two are minor and could probably be just cherry picked during code thaw. Um, and then the remaining open issues, it doesn't seem like any of them are uh, release blocking either, so. Cool. Cool. That's about it. Nice. Um, was somebody trying to say something? I wasn't sure. I thought I heard two voices at one point. I was just going to suggest if it's related to cluster auto scaling, maybe there are tests we could watch to see if it changes behavior. Um, OK. Uh, which tests? I, I would hope the owners of the cluster auto scaler thing would know. OK. Okay, I can comment on that issue then and let them know if they want us to monitor tests or which tests we should be monitoring for them. Sounds good. Cool, thank you. And that's about it. Cool, any other questions for bug triage? Okay, we can go on to test infra. Hey everyone, uh, we had about uh, 88 PRs merged last week and in the last day we had about seven PRs. Uh, Pro and test infra is healthy, so everything is green. Cool. Thank you. Any questions for test infra? All right, uh, Docs. Hello, everyone. Uh, all the pull requests which we are tracking are still under review, so we are good to go. Cool. Uh, release notes. Uh, we have the Google Doc up and going. We have shared it with everyone. We have alerted all of the SIG leads. Um, most of the work, the editorial work is going to happen over the weekend, like updating dependencies and actually going through, uh, it sounds like the themes meeting went well, and we will be able to take those themes and put them into the release notes as well over the weekend. So pretty much autopilot checking on Monday. Cool. Uh, comms.
Cool. I can't, um, for that like third open slot you mentioned, um, I know in the past it's been brought up that a lot of the groups who are doing things like outside of KK um, might be interested in like op taking some blog space to talk about the cool things they're doing. So we could possibly reach out to um, one of the SIGs, I think it's Cloud Provider, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Cool. And yeah, does anyone else on the call have any other suggestions that they could think of? If... Cool. Um, yeah, for the interviews, I remember last cycle it was mostly myself, Aaron, and then Natasha, and then one person from the SIG if we had any, well, we had Windows people joining for a lot of them because that was a big one. I don't know if we have enough big, if we have any big enhancement, we'd like to pull a rep from a SIG into specifically. Um, and then I think Lockie also mentioned interest in joining for a couple of them. And I think that's a good idea just so he gets exposure so he knows what he's gonna be doing next release. Sounds good. Any other questions for comms? All right, then uh, over to release branch management. Cheryl, if you are talking, you might be on mute. Oh, I'm sorry, double muted again. So um, I was saying, um, release uh, candidate one will be um, released on um, June 11th, which is a Tuesday. As for the, the thing I reported about yesterday, um, it was mostly because the bucket, um, the Kubernetes GCD bucket was not showing on the console. But uh, if you went to the URL by just changing, you know, <laughs> the name bucket maybe you would go to it and the artifacts are over there so we're we're in the green <laughs> um, okay i see someone changing some stuff okay cool um other than that um yeah i, I hope everyone's having a good friday <laughs> that's it for me cool thanks cheryl any questions for release branch management All right, I'll hand it over to Josh then. Hey there, um, EA here. Um, so um, one of the other things we're trying to do in the cycle is really get a jump on getting the 116 cycle started without having um, an effective two week gap um, between release and actually um, doing stuff as a release team. And part of what that means is getting most of the leads for the release team um, assembled either before the release or by the week of the release. Um, the way that you can help with that is uh, by nominating um, anybody from the current shadows um, who wants to and is ready to take over a lead position um, for the 116 cycle. Um, I've spoken, chatted with a lot of you over Slack, um, the, um, and I've added a link both in the chat and in the notes, um, for where the issue is. So please put your nominees there as soon as possible. Um, uh, we kind of wanted to have a bunch of nominations by today. Um, so far we have one. Um, so thank you. Um, I, oops, let's go back. Thank yeah. you, Kendrick. Um, and um, the um, 
Uh, but we need um, several of you when I chatted you over Slack said that you had a shadow picked out. Um, so please go ahead and put it there um, uh, today if you can. Yes, strong plus one. Um, we're about T minus, I think, six working days at this point until our targeted release date. So we're getting really close to the end. So hopefully everyone has some sort of plan in mind for their secession since we want to make sure that Lockie gets to go into his release with a fully staffed team. So... And I know that in a few moments, we're going to talk about uh, changes to test infra. So I understand, uh, Dual, why you might have been holding off or why anyone who you'd want to coordinate with around that might be holding off. Um, since I know we're merging, there's or there's an open PR to merge that role with other roles. But um, yeah, try to get your secession plans finalized very, very soon. And then uh, Josh, for the shadow survey for 116, have you gotten enough uh, input and feedback? I know you opened an issue for uh, feedback on the survey from last cycle. Um, I've gotten several comments for some changes to the questions, uh, nothing dramatic. Um, so I'm ready to go on that as soon as we actually have section leads, most of the section leads picked out. Cool. Thank you for all the work there. Super valuable, super helpful. Um, any other questions for Josh? All right, then we can move on to my update. I will go with yellow, mostly because I want to see these last few open issues, specifically the core DNS one, to get closed. Um, it's been open for a bit now and I would like to see some closure there. So that is why I will put the color yellow. Um, in terms of update, a plug to fill out the retro doc. It is linked at the top of this doc, but if you need a quick link, I can drop one in chat. Um, retros are super duper important and give all the feedback you have so the next release lead can make their release as awesome as possible. Um, we're gonna plan to have the retro on June 20th during the community meeting and facilitator for that to be determined. But I hope all of y'all can attend. Okay. I feel like I'd like someone who wasn't part of the release just so they have like the third party thing. Um, I'm assuming possibly just asking in SIG Contrabex. I should be able to find someone who's able to help. Yes. Cool. So that is my action item to get us a facilitator. Um, then succession plans as Josh had just mentioned, but like want to make an additional plug. Um, and then our next upcoming milestones on June 10th we have docs last call on june 11th is what when we're planning to do code thaw uh june 11th is then the 115 rc as well june 13th is the cherry pick deadline and then our target date is june 17th cool and that's all i've got for today any questions for me all right if not Oh, sorry. We have, uh, sorry, we had something in open discussion about like the test infra role. Do we have consensus to like move forward with uh, shutting that role down or merging those responsibilities into other roles? Yes. Yeah, I think it's good. I, I, I sort of felt like today this meeting was supposed to be the like speak now or forever hold your peace uh, part of it. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, yes, that was the next agenda item. So yes, we can move over to talk about the test in for role. If you haven't looked at the repo and have thoughts or comments, I'll drop a link to the repo and then we can all vote, share our thoughts and comments over the call. Also, uh, this is Vivek. I was shadow for branch management. 
uh, with Cheryl. And uh, if those two roles are getting merged, we might need an overview on uh, test infra as well. If uh, both the roles, uh, if we will have to uh, shadow both the roles together. Um, and yeah, I mean, this was the major thing. Otherwise, um, I'll add something to direct as well uh, regarding branch management where uh, shadows don't have access actually to do even a trial, which uh, really uh, leave us uh, without any confidence in terms of if we actually have to go and pick up that role next time or be a lead there. Um, because we haven't done that any time and just watching a few commands running up makes it difficult. So I feel like the proposal to remove this role is because effectively um, there is a command to like cut the branch configs and like somebody's happy to, to help out um, with you uh, when you do that as part of the branch management role. But all of the other responsibilities seemed like they were things that already belong to other roles, like just generally keeping track of how many things are merging used to be, I think, like bug triage roles responsibility. Um, reporting on the general health and, and understanding the test infrastructure and being aware of it is generally the responsibility of the test infra on-call person, which is completely orthogonal and separate to the release team and something we are working to uh, add community members to through a separate effort. Um, and we believe that like, you have the capabilities to open pull requests and, and edit all of the files that you need. Um, with respect to like dry running these changes, uh, nobody who has staffed the test info role has dry run the changes either. Um, so we're understanding the mistakes and we're understanding of doing it live. <clears throat> and so, I mean, that's, that's my understanding of it. Um, and I don't mean to be the dude who's speaking with the voice down from on high. I just feel like looking at the docs, it's kind of unclear to me exactly why this role exists. <laughs> so I think like, um, either Catherine or myself would be happy to, you know, uh, attend some branch management meetings if that's what it takes to sort of train up those people and build up the confidence there. Um, but the, the goal here is less people, less meetings, better documentation, more tools. Can I give some more context on what Vivek is probably asking? So um, I brought up the thing about, you know, shadows not having enough permissions and, and only when they become a lead, they're actually going through, you know, the actual practical work of it. So um, I think what Vivek was trying to say was that uh, we want permissions for shadows next uh, cycle. And uh, that will be brought up in the retrospective of this, um, of 1.15. So I think that's a portion of what Vivek was uh, trying to ask or bring up bring up about. Uh, is that right, Vivek? Is that what you were? Yeah. Okay, yes. Yeah. So that would be brought up in the retrospective. And right now we're trying to um, take apart the responsibilities from test infra on, and put it onto branch management. So just to clear that up a little bit. Yeah, and anyone else who has more context, feel free to jump in. I mean, Duval, maybe, maybe you can speak to this as you're sort of currently the test in for lead. Uh, how, what do you feel is currently unaddressed? Uh, I think we used to have uh, tasks of uh, test info on call in the test info job. That is no longer part of the handbook. Uh, so that is removed from the role of test info. We do not require anything else that the test info folks should do specifically. 
so i i don't see that as a requirement anymore it's just, i think what what uh, as i've also been a shadow under test infra before and what that what what the experience is that as a shadow you kind of are trying to understand what is happening in the space station from earth uh, because you don't get to sit in the space station, you don't have a mock of space station, so you don't understand what the job is. So you don't have enough confidence to graduate. But that discussion is not uh, relevant actually with respect to whether we should split and merge the jobs of test infra into other roles. That is, uh, with respect to that concern, I don't think this is, this is valid. But I think I agree with the shadows that shadows do not always have enough control or enough experience especially when they don't directly have prowl running in there. Uh, uh, yeah, that's a different thing. And like, maybe this is a special case, but I, I think a lot of the work that's been done to sort of automate this, the, the, the toil away has been done by Catherine, who is your shadow. And mm -hmm. so what you've been doing as a lead is sort of letting the shadow do the work and then providing the oversight to make sure that yes, the work is being done in an appropriate manner. And maybe that's a good model for others to think about in terms of uh, delegating responsibility. Yep, I agree with that. And something which Josh, uh, where we, we can int introduce in our next cycle on, in 1.60, ah, Josh has to say something, something to say. <laughs> That's one, yeah. Okay. I, I have, my, my, my shadow application was automating this job out of uh, the release team. So I'm in full plus one on this issue. Okay. Um, it, any other objections to moving forward with this? Um, I wanted to mention one detail that I already commented on the proposal, but nobody responded to, which is there was a weird proposal that reporting on PRs would become the responsibility of CI Signal. Um, and I don't really understand that. I don't understand how it became part of Test Infer to begin with. Okay. Because the last time I was bug triage or CI Signal, reporting on PRs was the responsibility of bug triage. Wouldn't so, it be great if the report was like an auto-generated thing that yeah. we could all look at instead of humans yeah. having to read out numbers at the meetings randomly? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, y'all. I started this when I led the release and I asked people to like, could they give a metric that represented from their role's perspective what they thought the health of the release was? I feel like that's cargo culted now to people like have to read out numbers and like, maybe that's not working. Maybe that's not the best use of everybody's time. Maybe there's a better way to get a sense of the health of the release that doesn't involve humans having to, to do toil. Uh, well, and so, like number of PRs merged and stuff is absolutely a dashboard we could build if it's not already represented in the like nine dashboards that live out there. Well, I guess the question is, but who's, the thing a human has to comment on is PR health. That is, we don't have the AI yet to determine whether a PR is in trouble. I would argue that could be, yeah, that's the fuzzy, fuzzy blend between CI signal and, and, uh, bug triage, which I always took to be triage of issues and PRs. Yes. We're blowing, now we're blowing scope. Um, okay. So, so one of the things, I mean, I think I commented, uh, Josh, to you saying that we, we started reporting those numbers as a way of explaining Tide and Prowl's health. If you have a huge uh, backlog in merge pool, then your number of PRs merge would be less in that last week. So I think that was one of the... Um, reasons I got also from Cole when we started this. So yeah, maybe you should look at from that perspective. It gives a metric, okay. but yeah, I but if, totally if that's, if that's the numbers we're reporting that should be fully automated. Yeah, I agree with that, yeah. Holistically, I would just, I, I think it's about when things went a little pear-shaped on Thursday and Friday of whatever week it was now. Sorry, time is a little meaningless to me at these point. At this point, like when you know we had fun with Prow and then fun with GitHub's API. Like it is useful to have some representation of that, some somebody speaking to that uh, in the release team meeting, so that we were aware it was happening. I don't necessarily think that means that a human has to say things every meeting. That's all. 
And so to me, that would be clear and effective communication from the test infra on call, letting the community as a, as a whole know that something is up. Uh, that ensures that the release team is aware that something is up and doesn't require a specialized role just for the release team to know that something is up. That would address the one concern that I've had if that was happening more proactively and broadly. And it, it would be much better, like you say, if it wasn't just to the release team, but broadly to the community. Hey, everybody, we've got a health issue. So then everybody in the community is not debugging the, the thing of the day in parallel. So in general, we do email these to Kubernetes dev, and I think we did when this happened last week, the week before, I've also forgotten. Um, I don't know if anyone actually reads Kubernetes dev, because most of the emails I send to it seem to not do anything, but <laughs> that is a channel we try to use for this reason. Yeah, try to be pretty clear about. Uh, so uh, we, we always have room to improve on our communication. I would welcome constructive suggestions in the form of tooling that allows us to do this in an easier manner, because it's kind of difficult for us to both keep the system running, uh, prevent it from exploding, and also build tooling to better facilitate our communication. Um, I aspire to grow the pool of people who can help us out with uh, one side of that equation uh, by moving the infrastructure over to some place that more of the community can support. Um, but like tooling to help us, you know, communicate status, report status and whatnot. If somebody's got one of those, they can pull down off the shelf and show how to use in a super low friction, great manner. That sounds cool. In the meantime, it seems like our stance is we, we let Kubernetes dev know when something big seems to be happening and then we let them know when it seems to have stopped happening. Um, to, to me, largely the, the other like wiggly thing that test infra maybe sort of used to know about was like all of the jobs that get cut for branches and why those jobs exist. I feel like that's now starting to be kind of questionable and that CI signal probably has a better, uh, a better feeling for what the jobs are and why the jobs are and why they exist. And I continue to push on trying to like better document that as well. Uh, for other humans. Uh, and I think between that and the tooling that Catherine has created, it's not really such a black art. It's like the jobs are what we're using on master, and then we fork them over. And then at that point, it's CI Signal's responsibility to make sure the jobs are green and meet the criteria that say that the jobs are blocking and stuff like that. Cool. Any other thoughts from anyone? Should we be getting a final assessment also from Lockie, since he's the one who would incur this change. It's unfortunate he's not here for the conversation. He is on PTO today. If he could uh, approve it on the issue that Catherine filed. Yeah. We can send him all these, all the notes from this conversation and yeah, give the him- The video link. Yes. Give him the final final say of what to do for 116. Does that sound fair to everyone on this call to, I guess that puts like a, another delay in this decision until Monday, but does everyone think it's fair to give Lockie the final say since it'll be his release team in theory? I say in theory, like it's not mostly finalized at this point. But also, I think it's important maybe to note, it seems like as a group, we have loose consensus that we are recommending this to him still. So. Yes. Yes. And if, if anyone wants feedback on communication channels around announcements of this info, you can reach out to me offline. And I'm happy to, happy to give what was helpful for me in that state as a release lead, finding out about 
the prow failure is real close to code freeze. But we don't need to discuss it with everyone on call. Uh, cool. So we'll pass this info over to Lockie. We'll hear back on Monday. Um, anything else anyone wants to discuss today? Going once, going twice. All right, that's burned down. Happy Friday.